Okay, and we're going to look into spiritual development and desires. One of the things I want people to get more acquainted with is finding different options for their desires. Say you want to go on a trip. You want to travel from one area to the next. You may actually not have the money to do this, the finance to do this, but you may not necessarily need money. There may be other options. A friend can bring you. Somebody else could just pay for it. Uh, there's all sorts of, I've come across stories where people actually went to companies. They went to car companies and the car company would loan them a car to drive it. It was a rental car and they needed to, sh to take the ship, the car to a different state. And they allowed the person the opportunity to do that. Um, whatever your goal and desire is, there's a way to do this without having to spend money. And Think of your goal and think of what your goal is and start looking at alternative options to find that success. Create that opportunity and create that success in whatever way possible. And a lot of people feel stagnant right now. They feel as though the money they need is not going to come and they only know one way to get the money and there's no other way to do it. And when money doesn't even, you might not even need money. And if you do need money, the way you need to get it, there might be multiple other ways. And there's nothing bad about money. Usually when people have a wealth of knowledge, they have other their health their health is good, they have a wealth of health, they have financial wealth. There's multiple different aspects of wealth. But I want to encourage people at this time to get more involved with their goals and their desires and and build new opportunities. Okay, and at this time, I'd like to welcome all the listeners uh, to Jamil Rawls' studies. And we're going to start off with a prayer. Um, we're going to ask the spirit, the spiritual matrix of creation, the infinite of the universe, to watch over everybody who's listening, their family members, their friends, their coworkers, uh, neighbors, whoever you got in your life around you. Um, we're doing a prayer, a cleansing prayer, a healing prayer. To exercise and get the negativity out of the atmosphere, get the negativity out of the way. A lot of people are at what you call, a lot of people have disease. And the word disease comes from a dis ease, a, a, a distance. They're not at ease, a distancing away from the ease. They're at dis ease. They're not in peace. They're not in comfort. They're not in harmony. That's where the idea of disease comes from anytime you're off balance so to speak and what I want to do right now is ask people to imagine a bluish white sphere of energy around yourself okay and breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth You can have your eyes open while you're doing this, but closing your eyes, it will go a long way. If you could just relax for about a minute. Put this on put this on pause, put this on pause and just relax for a minute and breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. And then try breathing through your mouth and out through your nose a few times. Do this for a minute. Take some deep breaths. Most people don't get enough oxygen. They don't breathe. They don't, they're not working with the atmosphere, working with nature enough. Get more involved. Get some really deep breaths of oxygen. Open your mind up. Relax. Imagine a bluish white light around you. And enjoy that meditation. Uh, you can also imagine for that that's an energy, a soothing energy. A very familiar energy to most people who like to relax in, in an essence of love and joy. A good healing remedy would be to imagine the color purple. Imagine yourself in a sphere of purple. In a sphere of purple. Breathing purple. Purple is very healing. It's a very healing energy. And so... Now I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. And a lot of the times people have in their mind 
they want to accomplish goals and accomplish things and their belief structure and their belief systems are preventing them from doing it <laughs> say there's a goal you want to accomplish you want to get you want to meet some new person you want to get close to them you want to be friends with them you want to work with them you want to start a project with them you might want to have a relationship with them that's what you want but you have a contradicting belief that you cannot accomplish that that there's something wrong with you okay most people will never get to enjoy this wish that they have they will never get to have this business partner or create this project <clears throat> or have this friend or a lover or whatever because they have two contradicting belief systems so the metaphysical mentoring that I'm doing is urging people to confront their belief systems what is it about you that you really believe that you cannot accomplish something and get in and get into that figure out why who gave you that belief who gave you that belief? Was it your mother? Was it your father? Was it just you picked it up from, from your teachers and just just something is subliminal? You subliminally picked this up growing up as a child? Meditation's number one. I'm gonna be moving on now. We're gonna look at mantra work. Mantra work. Uh, over the last year, I've done a lot of mantra work. There was about 20 different women that I was talking to doing channeling sessions and doing mantra work. And I would sit there and speak with them over the phone and they would all be frustrated, angry, depressed, some of them suicidal, some of them homicidal. And I would sit there and speak with them privately on the phone. And to get people, to get them in balance, I would always do a mantra meditation where we, I, we, would just, we would just pause for a second and I would say, can I do a mantra with you? Some of them would know what a mantra was. Others, other of them had no idea what it was. Most of them didn't know what, most of them had heard of it or were familiar with it. And I would say, yeah, it's a mantra. And we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna say, do 10 mantras. We're gonna do these mantras. And we would sit down and I would, we, together we would say, we are in we 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 are love and light. 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 What that would do is that would energetically raise their vibration. It would take the fear out of them, the anger, the hostility, the stress. You know, instead of smoking a cigarette, do a mantra. Instead of drinking a beer, do a mantra. Instead of smoking marijuana five times a day, try a mantra five times a day. Or smoke marijuana once a day and try the mantra four times. <laughs> I don't smoke marijuana, but I come across a lot of people who do, and I never frown at anybody for that. But I always tell them a lot of these, a lot of times these substances you're using are are are, are artificial. Are, art, are artificial constructs for something you can do naturally. I started doing this mantra work. People stopped drinking. People stopped smoking. People were so happy. Uh, there was a woman who was running a, a shop. She was, she was a business owner. And she had nobody she could talk to. And I said, you know what? I'm a metaphysical expert. That's what I do. I, I'm into all different kinds of subjects. But metaphysics is one of my favorites. And I sat down and talked with her. She got her. She eventually got her shot back going. She got her house. She got that. She she was struggling. She was about to. She didn't know where she was going to live. She got a house close to her shop, and she got her shop back going like she wanted to be going. It was falling apart. She had a guy who was leeching off of her, taking money from her, and the shop was going downhill. The mantra work brought it back together. I didn't do it. The power of the infinite did it. Okay. So, meditation, the light meditation, the color meditation, the mantra work, the prayer work is number one. Number one. Then coming back to the belief structure as we start off with 
the word disease is a dis ease a dis of ease getting into the structure of why do we feel the way we feel about certain things or certain people why do we why some people feel inadequate some people feel some people you can look at them they feel very confident and that's a wonderful thing a lot of the people who are very confident they've been told that they can accomplish certain things over and over and over again it's like the placebo effect you take a shot there's doctors out there who have miraculously healed people miraculously healed people with a sugar with 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 sugar water with a sugar they put a sugar cube in some water give it to the person and say this is a new this is a new serum it's a new formula it's going to heal you the person drinks the water and, and 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 you know what they get healed from it then the doctor eventually sometimes tells them there there was nothing in there you just drank some all you did was drink some sugar water and and you'd be surprised the reaction these people can't believe it that's called the placebo effect it is real there's been people out there who who have multiple personalities where um there's one personality and it's fractured like a pie and uh some of these personalities don't even know they're there there's been some of these people who have had hiv um they've had cancer They've had other sorts of ailments and diseases. They they switched personalities. And when they switched personalities, the disease disappeared. There's been people who switch personality and their eye color changes. And the modern medical field knows about this. They know about this. See, this this is this is I work with strong metaphysical knowledge. And my goal is to be able to build people to the point to where they can do things themselves. Where they can do things themselves. Now, words have power in them. Words have power. Like when somebody says they're doing a spell on somebody, you say, we're going to do this spell. Look at what they're doing. Spell. A spell. Writing. Words. Okay, we're back, and this is metaphysical mentoring, and we're going to get back into the meditation. Um, purple is a healing meditation. Imagine yourself in a sphere of purple. Breathe in the purple. Breathe out the purple. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Try this about 20 times. Healing deep meditative breaths. Then try the mantra. Say to yourself, <clears throat> vocally and verbally, out loud. Say, I am love and light. 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 You keep going like that. It will raise your energy and raise your frequency. There was about 20 different women that I spoke with. Uh, over the course, the beginning, of, um, about around this time last year, around this same time last year, there was about 20 different women that I spoke with, and I did channeling work for them. I'm an intuitive. I channel chakra spirits for people. Individuals have seven chakras, and for each chakra, there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a, a soul being, a spiritual being, spirit guide, if you call it. There's many more spiritual guides than just seven, but for each chakra there is one. And I would channel the individual's spirit guide for them. I channel my own spirit guides all the time. Somebody else comes along, I can channel their spirit guide for them, their chakra spirit guide. If they have ancestral spirits, I can get in contact with those spirits. 
I would do mantra work with these women. It would bring the stress level down. They wouldn't smoke cigarettes as much. They wouldn't drink alcohol as much. They wouldn't smoke. Uh, there was a need. Some of them smoked marijuana. They didn't need to smoke as much. Some of them even stopped. This metaphysical work that I do works with the, 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 the spiritual matrix of the individual psyche. You know, you can go to a doctor and get a psychological profile, but can you get a spiritual profile? And that's what I do. I sit back, listen to the person, do the inventory with the person, learn about what's happened in their past, learn about where they're at right now, and talk about where, where, where life is going in the future. And right now, the medical clinic is not providing enough information for people to metaphysically get healthy, to spiritually get healthy. You have spiritual intelligence, emotional intelligence, <clears throat> and you have to unite this with mental intelligence. Most people are only using mental intelligence. So in the metaphysical work I do, I like to focus on spiritual intelligence, emotional intelligence, and get that metaphysical grounding that people need. Get that metaphysical grounding. People go to a doctor. They say that there's something going on in their life. They're hearing noises at night. They've seen things at night. Between 12 and 3 a.m. is when the pineal gland is the most open. The pineal gland is most open between 12 and 3 a.m. Okay, the pineal gland produces dimethyltryptamine. That's a psychedelic stimulant. People who smoke ayahuasca get the dimethyltryptamine. Your pineal gland is the crown chakra, the seventh chakra. That's the gateway to super consciousness. So at night, between 12 and 3 a.m., if the person's not in a deep sleep having a lucid dream, they're in a waking state, connecting to the superconsciousness. And so you go to a doctor, a doctor's not going to sit there and say, wait a minute, you're having a side effect from superconsciousness. They're not going to tell you that. They may tell you to relax a little bit and get some exercise. Or they may try to prescribe you with a medication based off a, a diagnosis that is unneeded. So, a lot of people are coming to me feeling like there's something wrong with them. And there's nothing wrong with you. Now, there's another meditation. That's a wonderful meditation. is meditating with a blue and white light around you. Meditate with a blue and white light around you. And you can say, I am love and light. Or you can say, I am in the light. Or you can come up with a completely new mantra. You can say, the world is going in a perfect place. The world is going in a perfect place. The world is a better place. The world is a better place. Over time, over the next few weeks, you'll be more aligned with the planetary consciousness that is on that level. <clears throat> you'll be more aligned with the planetary consciousness that is on that level. And you can make your way into that world. So, uh, if you feel your energy is dragging, just, do, just lighten up. Do some mantra work. Do some meditation work. Get more in touch with yourself. Uh, if, if you're familiar, I'd like people to go online or go to the bookstore and look up some of uh, Abraham Maslow's work on peak experience. And he was ahead of his time and he put some real groundwork for people back in the 1960s. And people would have venting sessions where if two people had some animosity with each other, they would come together and have a venting session. And both say what they wanted to say to each other and then shake hands afterwards and move on. And it was a healthy way of dealing with things. A lot of people are walking around with hostility who need a venting session. And even if they can't have a venting session with the person that they have the disagreement with, they can find somebody to play the part. 
they can find somebody to play the part. There's a lot of ways you can deal. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can deal with life. So, now this is Jamil Rawls studies, and we're looking at dis-ease. Disease, it's a dis, it's a distance, a, di a dis of the ease. You know, people need to be more at ease, more at peace, more grounded, and picture your aura, picture your energy. Picture yourself with a blue and whitish sphere of light around you and feel that energy going into the ground, into the earth, into that magnetic power of the earth. Now, most people walk on the city. They don't go out into nature and walk. They don't go out, the, you know, when you get a chance, take off your shoes and go put your feet in some mud. Go do some gardening work or go to the park and walk around with no shoes on the grass. Get, get into the dirt if you can. Get connected with the earth. Walking on the earth it will get you electromagnetically connected to the earth's core vibration. Walking on the city is a different thing. Take off those shoes. Get out of, get out of, get out of town. Go on a hiking trip. Go enjoy yourself. People are contacting me right now and they want to talk on the phone. I say, let's get involved. Come pick me up. Come fly to where I'm at. You know, let's get involved with the earth. Let's work some real metaphysical stuff. You know, emails can only go so far. You know, some people need some people need mentoring. They need a guide in their life. Not everybody has 10, ten not everybody has 10, 15, 20 years to go sit in a library and read books and pay for pay for classes and courses to travel around and talk to people. Some people just need a guide. Somebody who's already been there and done that. Okay. So, that's number 1. Now, hand mudras are a beautiful way of dealing with stress and dealing with life. I'd like for people to uh, look into the, the, the to look into <clears throat> a book. If you can get to the library, they have a book of hand mudras, or you can go on the internet and just Google hand mudras, M-U-D-R-A-S, and there's hand mudras that relieve stress. It's a form of yoga. Okay. work with some of these hand mudras enjoy these hand mudras and relieve stress relieve stress okay
Okay, and I'd like to welcome everybody to Jamil Rawls Studies. Tonight, what we're going to be doing is going over a very interesting topic. Society. Society. And there was a film that I had in mind that I wanted to describe to people um, during this short lecture. And it's a film called Society. It was a film back in 89, 1989. Within the film... It was about a young, maybe it was 88, 89, around that area. Within the film, it was a young man who lived in Beverly Hills. And he lived around a family. Or he, I mean, he didn't live around. He lived with the family. He was a part of the family. And they all were different than him. They all acted different. They looked different. And it turns out, he was adopted. Uh, his move, The name of the character in the movie was Bill Whitney. That was his name in the movie, Bill Whitney. And Bill Whitney went to Beverly Hills High School. He had a beautiful sister, a uh, nice-looking mother, nice father. Uh, but these people were strange. People were strange, right? So Bill Whitney uh, had a friend who was uh, recording these people's conversations. And he brought it back and showed him how strange the family really was. And... The family, in the end of the film, you see how they invite him to some sort of party. He ends up at a party, and all these people are there, and they're all the ones running the, the town that he's in. And he, you, throughout the whole film, there was a feeling that you knew they were going to turn on him. They turned on him at the party. It was a really weird scene. A lot of people in today's world feel like that. They feel a lot like Bill Whitney in the film. Uh, in the alternative research community, increasingly, there's more and more people who are coming forward, who are contacting me and, and, and letting me know, communicating to me, that they're being told that they're crazy. They're being told that there's something wrong with them. And in fact, sometimes these people feel crazy. If, you're, if, you, if you feel like this, you may feel that you're going out of your mind no one will accept your views. And basically, what's happened is society has become outdated. Uh, the social model in society, the thinking is still about the same thinking that you would see in the 1980s. And realistically, some of its uh, society's thinking is about the equivalent of the Middle Ages. Uh, there's people, <laughs> believe it or not, there's people right now walking around who have who who have structure who have viewpoints of society that are, are going back to the Middle Ages. Their belief systems are going back to the Middle Ages. And most people have the mindset in the West from the eighties, some of the people from the fifties, but there's still people walking around whose minds have not changed. The minds of a lot of people have not changed too much from the Middle Ages. And we're seeing an increase in people being told. We're seeing a, a social cultural phenomenon uh, of the, the medicalizing of normal behavior. Normal behavior is being medicalized. Uh, children are growing up. Normal children are growing up and being told that they're hyperactive, that their attention spans off, that there's something wrong with them. And they have normal behavior and they're being medicalized. They're being given drugs. You have adults who never had any symptoms or any signs of any psychological issue. And they're being told that there's something wrong with them and that they're off. Why would somebody wait their whole life to, to, to be crazy? That doesn't make much sense to me. You wait till you're 40 years old or 30 years old to be crazy. That doesn't make a lot of sense. But that's what's happening. And there's a cultural matrix that people are waking up to. People are waking up to a cultural ma matrix and realizing that everything they've been told is false. Nothing works anything like the way they think it did. People are starting to realize that things like extraterrestrials, things like the paranormal, ghosts, interdimensional beings, that may be a reality. Uh, there's people who hear noise in their house late at night. Um, they see things in their house late at night. And it, uh, 
one of the things that's been happening is consciousness has been, been sped up between 12 and 3 a.m. That's when your pineal gland is most active. Um, that's dimethyltryptamine that naturally comes out of your pineal gland. That's the same chemical DMT that people use who smoke hi ayahuasca and take other sorts of hallucinogen, you know, other sorts of drugs where there's DMT in them. Uh, your crown chakra governs your pineal gland, the seventh chakra. And so late at night, people will get a feeling, you know, they're being watched in their room at night. They see things, they hear things, and they're being prescribed medication for that. They're being told that they're crazy and they're off and being given medication. In reality, what's happening is natural. What's happening is natural. Their natural height and senses are opening up and they're perceiving reality in a different sense. The things that we're not things that we're not seeing before, now they're seeing. People are talking about parapsychology now. And parapsychology is a subject that I love. I really love parapsychology. Parapsychology is the study of the paranormal. Telekinesis. Uh, uh, remote viewing. One of the aspects of um, parapsychology that I love is retrocognition. Retrocognition is the ability to be able to see into the past. To look at pictures or hear stories and, and make out scenarios in your mind of events that happened in the past. I love retro psychology. That's retro cognition. I'm sorry, retro, retro psychology, retro, retro cognition. Then you have precognition. Precognition is a sense of the future. Retrocognition is a sense of the past. So retrocognition, viewing the past, looking at pictures, listening to stories, and you can make out events. And you're, you'll be psychic, remote, using remote. This is a form of remote viewing. And people may say, how did you know that? How, how did you know what happened back in 1954 uh, or 1928 uh, or 18? How did you know that? How did you know what happened back in 1968? You weren't there. You, you may be using, you may be researching, but through retrocognition, you're using height and senses to figure things out. Your consciousness is touching that dimension of reality. And the past is in the now. The past and the future are both perspectives of the now. You can't prove the past exists and you can't prove the future exists. No matter how many artifacts you have or pictures you have or evidence you have, you're showing it in the now. So in essence, what we perceive to be the 1954 or 1928 or 68 is simultaneously occurring right now. Those worlds are right here, right now. So through retrocognition, you're examining an aspect of the present that you're viewing as being the past. That's the metaphysics that go along with it. Precognition is the future. A lot of people do this through psychic dreaming. People have dreams about events before they happen. That's psychic dreaming. Okay. Psychic dreaming. Okay. So, looking at parapsychology, we can learn a little bit more about ourselves and about society. Now, in parapsychology, there's the concept of the metaparticle. The metaparticle is the psychic signal that is used by the individual who's picking up on information in the past or the future or through ESP, extrasensory perception, communicating a psychic message using a psychic signal. And the the uh, the meta the the meta particle is now known as a tachyon particle. Okay. And through meditation, through meditation, this can be utilized 
in many different ways to learn more how to prepare ourselves for the future. The more we know of the past, the more we know of the present, then we can prepare ourselves for the future. Now, parapsychology has been used all over the world by many different people. Uh, it was used in the Soviet Union very effectively. There was a woman named uh, Larissa, Larissa Vilenskaya, who had a show many years ago dealing with firewalking and psychic healing where she would show how firewalkers could walk on fire without being burnt. Uh, people could put swords to their neck without being cut. And she was showing through the practice of Reiki how people could heal people. And there's also a subject called psychic surgery. That's been a recent phenomenon. Nevertheless, parapsychology parapsychology is used as an investigative tool as well. There's a lot of skilled professional detectives out there who have gone to parapsychologists to study and learn what is going on. To learn more about what is going on in the present. Now, the energy that's used is called psycho, psychoenergetic. Psycho -ener you're becoming psychoenergetic. So this is a psychoenergetic phenomenon. Now, I experience a lot of intuitive insights, and I've been able to maximize that through theta wave meditation. Theta wave meditation. Uh, sitting down and listening to the binaural beats of theta music has helped me to open my mind more and more and more to be more intuitive. Okay? And the ability to do that, that your psychic signals go out in pulses. Going back to what we were called, talking about the Tachyon particle, uh, now Tachy in Greek means rapid. Okay? Tachy means rapid. So you're sending out, your, your brain is sending out a rapid signal to the universe. Okay? And at the atoms, the, the molecular, 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 <laughs> molecular universe is broken down into atoms, and the atoms are made out of oscill os oscillating energy grids. It's an oscillating energy grid that's pulsing through the universe. Okay. And going back to what we were originally saying, uh, a lot of people coming out and learning about the paranormal, learning about psychic ability, and they're being told, some of these people are being told that they're psychologically off. Some of them are even being told that they're schizophrenic. Schizophrenic means split mind. Okay. That's what, that's what schizophrenic actually means, is to have a split mind. Okay. So, most of the people who are experiencing this paranormal activity, they're absolutely regular, everyday people who are experiencing the world as it really is. There's nothing truly wrong with them. Right. There's nothing truly wrong with them. And so, right now as I'm speaking, I'm just looking through a book. Uh, some writings that I was doing, a small book that I was in the process of writing. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm uh, getting more in touch with my listeners. Getting more in touch with the people that I come across. A lot of the people that are listening to this are people that have reached out to me for help. I'm doing metaphysical mentoring. And I'm giving people information they can use to go learn more about themselves and more about the world that they're in. Now, one of the, one of the things that people are going through right now is an identity crisis. 
people are having what you know an identity crisis they're not sure who they are they're not sure what they're striving for or, or what they could be or what they want to be and it's frustrating to watch oftentimes I'll go out into the public and I'll pick up on people I'll see people and by the texture of their skin I know where they're at in their life they look uncertain they look unsure of themselves and a lot of times they are they're very unsure or very uncertain of themselves and a lot of them have the ability to catch up but they're afraid to they want the approval people are after all this little approval they want approval from their friends they want approval from the women around them or the men around them or they, they want to feel like they're on top of the game a lot of them are sociopathic if they're not sociopathic they're still playing some sort of game with themselves and they're and they're not being honest they don't have the honest integrity with themselves at what they should have. They don't have the honest integrity with, them, with themselves like they should. And so people are afraid to open up and admit that there's more to reality than the, what, what, the, what they've been admitting to themselves. We're seeing this right now more and more with the phenomenon of flying craft, flying saucer type craft. And, it, you know, we can see that the world is going to a completely different place than what it was before. Everybody's online, they're on the internet, everybody's communicating with each other, and uh, it's a new earth that people are moving towards. People are moving towards a new earth, and whatever that means for the person that's, mo that's moving in that direction.